Hello, my name is Tom Stiles. This is Tom's Radio Room Show number nine. I've been uh, sick with a bad cold for about two weeks, so that's why I haven't done a show until now. I'm going to try to get one in today if my voice holds out. And I'm going to use a uh, video from Joe uh, that talks about the subject that uh, I wanted to talk about and does a very good job. And I thank Joe for allowing me to use his video from YouTube. The subject I want to talk about today is software defined radio. Software defined radio is a radio that the front end is still in hardware like a conventional radio, but the back end, the mixers, the amplifiers, the audio section and stuff like that is synthesized or emulated on a PC. Uh, this comes in several forms, and one form is that you use a standalone uh, radio that has uh, an output that can be put into your computer to do this uh, front end uh, synthesizing of the parts of the radio. Or there are now being built uh, small boxes, about four by five inches, uh, about one inch high that just have the front end of the radio and connect to your computer via USB or RS-232 and then your computer does all the back end like I was talking before. So to illustrate this, and I'm just learning myself, so I found this video that I think is quite useful and I thank Joe for allowing me to use it. So I'll run his video. I can't run the whole thing because it's longer than 15 minutes and I'm only allowed on uh, YouTube 15 minutes of uh, recording. So I've already used up a couple of minutes myself. So another further ado, I'll go to his show. Thank you again. Hi there. This is Joe, VE1BWV, Victor Echo 1 Bravo Whiskey Victor here in the East Coast. What we're looking at today is a uh, another amateur radio program. This one's by Simon. HB9DRV and it's called a SDR radio. It works with a bunch of uh, various software defined radios. Some are commercial radios and some are, are kits. What we're going to do today is actually interface it and run it with a homemade soft rock. And if you do a Google for soft rock um, SDR you'll find uh, all about the kit and, and all that sort of stuff. And it's still beta this program this program allows you to do a direct connection to your PC and control your software defined radio or uh, it allows you to do a remote connect to control other software defined radios located around the world uh, the package comes both with a client and a server so you can choose either way uh, in case you want to run your own remote server as well so let's have a quick look here looks like a basic radio, nothing unusual. Um, you have the, uh, the S-meter, which can be an analog or digital. You see how it looks there, just different representations. It's a very, very flexible program. You have a um, frequency readout, controllable by doing a right click or left click on any particular digit. And you have tuning indications down here, which we'll show you once we start the, the actual software. Uh, in the listening mode, you have your fine tunes, your rough tunes, and tons of options as you go across here. So let's um, get started with doing some basic tuning and uh, maybe look at some of the other options as uh, when we get a chance. So first thing you have to do is you just click and run it after it's installed, nothing unusual. Uh, you go to the input source and you decide whether you're going to run remote or local. In this case we're going to run local. Um, because I do have an SDR actually hooked up to this PC. But we'll do a remote and you'll see that it's really not much difference. Uh, it's just that the radio on remote course can be anywhere in the world. So on local, the sound card has been selected. And this is this information here is what has been gathered by the program uh, in accordance to whether it's a local sound card. And of course it would be different if it was actually on remote. Nothing unusual there. You basically uh, on local, so you just hit start. Uh, let me turn some of this audio in the background down. Let's pick some place where there's some activity here. 
like uh, right here. I'm going to turn the sound back up. So you heard that audio. The way you can tune this, as I mentioned, uh, you can just click left or right button, depending on whether you want up or down in any digit. You can fine tune it here, and this will cause this to move uh, accordingly. And the scale here is changeable. All these are changeable items. Uh, one of my easiest ways, basically, is to go over the tuning bar indicator, hold the mouse button down, and drag left or right. So I am looking at the waterfall here, and I'll do an approximate tune. I'll turn it up. And we'll see what happens here. Uh, I can change the bandwidth. See how that goes narrow. I'm going the wrong way. North Carolina calling CQ, CQ, CQ20. CQ20, North Carolina. So you can see right there, that's how uh, you can tune into any particular station. Again, as I mentioned, uh, you can fine tune, you can uh, individually tune, and then you can do a dragon tune. So let's pick another area of the band. Uh, let's see here. Let's just go up to the 300 area. See if they, oh, there's a little more activity up here, maybe. So again, I just bring the mouse over to it. I'll turn the audio up. Tune around a little bit here. Mm, 20 meters, not a huge amount of activity at the moment, so I'll turn that audio down. Let's go to 40 meters. As you notice, when I want to go to a band, I could have typed it in up here uh, as well, but it's easier to uh, get to the general area by uh, clicking on the appropriate band. Let's see if there's anything on 19 megs right now. It looks like there's something right there. I can see something. Let's turn up and listen. I want to do some uh, zoom tune, as they call it. Up here, there's a zoom button, and it opens another window, which basically amplifies the uh, the area down here, so you can see the edges. So it does make it a little easier to tune as well. So many, many ways to tune it. But you notice here there's a fair amount of noise, and that's going to depend on the various bands. Um, the noise levels in this are an adjustable feature. If you go to up here where it says waterfall, you'll see the waterfall come up here, and I can increase or decrease the clipping. I'll get rid of some of that clipping and cut down the gain a little bit. It just gets rid of the extra junk, but again, it's a programmable feature. You have um, areas you can adjust the scope. You can put the noise reduction in, which I'll do. You can, if you're doing CW, put a peak filter in. And um, AGC, so I'm going to leave that as it is. Uh, hide those things, and if you put them in hide, they'll just sit on the side here, and you can call them up. Um, you can navigate as well by pulling out the navigate and clicking any one of these areas, and you'll go to those bands. And there's also a memory area where you can actually uh, uh, put in the frequencies that you want and then call them back. There's also recording features. You can do recording, etc. So let's have a quick look here uh, while I got the audio turned down at uh, some of the areas. Yeah, this is the, uh, you can do a news feed, you can check the calendar. Um, you can go to broadcast stations, um, a data recorder if you want to listen to CW and decode PBSK, uh, etc. Put up a clock. You can look at the audio frequency spectrum. There it is there, and I can stretch it out to make it wider so you can see where the cutoff is and everything else. I'll just hide that. Um, preset memories. There's none at the moment, but they just add them, and it'll, it'll remember the bandwidth and everything that's associated with whatever frequency that you saved. Um, all right, there. All right, there's your recorder. You can look at the map, peak meters. Pretty well self-explanatory. And transmitters for future use. It's uh, This is only beta, so it's not completed yet. Um, councils, you can have it uh, look differently. You can have a spectrum only, which would just be the top part. You can have the spectrum in the waterfall, which is what I'm running right now. 
uh, so different combinations, different ratios, uh, you know, more waterfall, less spectrum, uh, etc. Okay, that's a part of Joe's video. As I said before, I can't show the whole thing, but you can go to YouTube and look up this call sign, which is at the beginning of the video that you saw, and uh, see the whole video. The second part of that video is talking about how you can use this software and connect to uh, radios on the internet so you can experience how this whole system works without buying anything. The software is free. You get to use the other people's radios for free. And you can try out all the functions. And then if you really got uh, really like it, uh, you can find out what radios are available. You can buy the front end part of the radio itself and use this software. Or there's other packages available uh, that provide other features that uh, will talk to your SDR uh, type of radio. So that's the show for the day. Uh, hopefully I my voice is not too bad and you can understand what I'm saying. Again, thanks to Joe for his excellent video. Joe does a really super job. And please watch the rest of it because it gets more interesting and he provides more details later into the video, which I could not show. Okay, that's it for now. I hope to uh, do another show later in the week when I feel better. Thank you very much. Bye.